I'm zesting a lie. <laughs> hey. All right. Hi, sweet friend. Welcome to Watercolor Happy Hour. My name is Volta. I'm the artist behind Color Snack. And this here is my husband, Dan, who is our in house mixologist and kind of like a, a creative cocktail genius, craft cocktail genius. I'm creatively genius crafting a cocktail as we speak. Yes. This is Volta's favorite cocktail yes. of the moment. Uh, we are not showing this cocktail because it's literally very simple. Um, so, and it's not very pretty. I mean, there's not a lot of like colorful things to paint. So really you wouldn't, it's just would be really boring to paint, honestly. Volta just wanted to drink one while I talk. Uh, like more like sip. Enjoy, because it's a very nice. Those are um, all synonyms. Yeah, enjoy. Yeah, it also gives me a chance to talk about this awesome gin that I found, Aboyuki gin. Now, the folks at uh, the store where I got that told me that uh, Aboyuki is from a former marketing director of Suntory Gin. Mm. It is. Spectacular. Thank you. And probably one of the best drinks that you can make with it. It's such a good gin that's made with uh, one of those unique varieties of strawberries mm -hmm. that are in Japan. You yeah. know, the white ones with the little pink dots on them that are just gorgeous and just so strawberry flavored. Uh, this is the least giniest gin I've ever had. It tastes more like an explosion of a strawberry field in your mouth. Mm -hmm. So all you need to yeah. do with it is just kind of take uh, one part of gin to one half to one part of simple syrup and a zest of lime, or just a nice little strip of lime, and boom. So, yeah, it looks You've got very, an easy cocktail. very simple. As you can see, not a lot to watercolor here, <laughs> yeah. but it is so delicious. But very tasty, and it makes a nice segue to talk about this strawberry gin, which I've already introduced, and this omakase strawberry vinegar. Oh. I'm so excited to get it. <laughs> Apparently, this is this sells out instantly yes. when it's available. Yeah. What's oh, Oishi? Uh, well, so the vinegar is from Brightland, but mm -hmm. it's a collaboration with Oishi, oh. uh, which is um, a company that grows strawberries in a vertical farm and so they grow them year round uh and i believe they got the original seeds from japan and they're just growing them in the united states so and apparently these strawberries are supposed to taste like i don't know heaven I, just like the most delightful thing um well, if the vinegar is any indication then yes yeah it's it's spectacular i haven't tried the strawberries yet but one day i will because they only like you can only get them in new york and l.a well, vertical farming is the new hotness. It is a very green way of farming, yes. environmentally conscious, sustainable. You know, Walmart just announced they're going to be doing a lot of vertical farming. But Walmart's getting into yeah. farming yeah. too, which was like a huge news because they're huge and they're, it's like a big thing for for a company to undertake. Mm. Anyway. Mm. <laughs> Not a financial advisor, but vertical supply chain integration usually means good things for the stock. So I'm going to look into that. Uh, that's another stream. Yes. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, we're talking about art and cocktails yes. here. Uh, uh, yes. But the cocktail that we're making today uses a nice bit of chemistry that you can get from the acidity and vinegar, as well as the just general strawberry awesomeness that we found between these two of the uh, these two uh, liquids I guess this isn't an alcohol these two liquids that uh, that are that are using those unique strawberries that are coming out of Japan uh, yeah you don't need to pay ten dollars a strawberry you can pay thirty dollars for <laughs> a bottle of gin and yeah. I don't want to know how much this vinegar cost but probably not as it much as those strawberries oh, okay it that's was, not terrible. I mean it it's, it wasn't like, it's not like you were run of the mill vinegar. Yes. It's not a $5 vinegar. No, no, anyway. right, right, right. Not a $5 vinegar. Not, <laughs> it's, not it that. was special, okay? <laughs> yeah, not, not any of that white vinegar yeah. stuff. No. 
Well, all right. well, on to the actual cocktail itself. Uh, this this cocktail, if you saw Volta's Instagram post, isn't much of a cocktail. No, oh, LinkedIn post. Yeah, yeah. Sorry, yeah, sorry, phone, sorry. All right, forget where you share <laughs> yeah, things. Yeah, yeah. We yeah. used to be on Instagram, but we're on LinkedIn because this is a much better platform. Yes, <laughs> yes, you're right. Okay, if you saw her LinkedIn post where she got all the engagement. I'm not a social media guy, I'm sorry. <laughs> if you saw the LinkedIn post, you got a yeah. bunch of engagement. People were really excited about it. it it's... It was it was inspired by the idea that really the best part of like a Ramos Gin Fizz or a Whiskey Sour or any of those those ones that use egg whites, like the best part is sort of that foam on the top. Mm -hmm. So why not make a cocktail that's all foam? Yeah. It's effectively a mousse. It's so delicious. And Dan, tell us what, because um, we named this cocktail Ichigo Cloud. Yes. Cocktail. And what, what does Ichigo mean? Ichigo means strawberry in Japanese. So I Ichigo, love I love it. <laughs> as well as a common yeah. name for people in Japanese cartoons that have red hair. But we're going into that level of geekery. So really, you created this from scratch mm -hmm. because we this is not a recipe that we've previously, um, you know, seen on blogs or other people. So I, I was so excited because, you know, when I got this um, vinegar, I was like, Dan, we have to make a cocktail with this. And it has to be strawberry forward. And of course, this one is very much strawberry forward. <laughs> and it is. It, it also has a nice little like dovetail since we're doing this on LinkedIn. Hopefully I'll be sharing some stories about one of my favorite clients and such a cool project that I'm working on. Can't wait. Oh, it's going to be awesome. But let's just say yeah. I do. I, I, work with eggs a lot yes and we eat a lot of eggs <laughs> we do uh so i know what goes into eggs you're going to see me use a lot of eggs and it's going to seem like they're raw but the trick is i'm going to move that yeah, Actually, i can do here. it here. Yeah. here yeah so the trick is pasteurized yes now, if you look on any cooking channel or read a cookbook they're going to tell you you cannot make a meringue out of pasteurized egg whites from a carton. That is a lie. You can totally do it. Ah, you just can't do it with the egg white by itself. Yeah. You can use little hacks. Yeah. So increasing the acidity with something like vinegar, mm -hmm. increasing the viscosity with something like a totally natural ingredient, an actual natural ingredient, mm -hmm. guar gum, will do it. Or if you're not trying to do a cocktail, you can actually add dehydrated egg whites to dry them out. Mm. Uh, that's a secret of uh, people that make macarons. They will leave the egg whites in an open container in the fridge for a day to let them dehydrate a bit. Oh. And that causes them to have a little bit more uh, firmness yeah. when whipped. Oh, but cool. you can also just add dehydrated egg whites to egg whites and create yeah. the same thing. So this is like drinking a macaron, but not really. Kind it's it's of... more like drinking a souffle. Yeah. And we're going to make it... this souffle fall or mousse. Mousse. A yeah, mousse. it's very light. But I feel like mousse sometimes can be... No, mousse can be light. Yeah. Mousse isn't heavy. Mousse is supposed to be light. Yeah, yeah. Just very light. People that's call right, that's them right. mousse. They're really making like, like a flourless a chocolate cake. Or, yeah. Yeah. And I'm doing this in double portion. So I'm doing uh, two ounces of egg white. You want to move it here? Uh, if they want to. I don't think they can see it. that. Yeah. Okay. They'll see it in a second. <laughs> Figure we can just hold this up and do it. Is that good? We're trying out new camera yeah. techniques. Maybe Thank you everyone for joining. Hi, yeah. Yolanda. Hi, oh, Georgetta. Ciao, Patrizia. Mm -hmm. Welcome to our show. All right. What was it? No. Yeah. Yes. So the things that it's we're going to use to make this uh, mousse stand up to all the whipping and to give it some flavor we're going to add uh roughly a one to two ratio of simple syrup now this is just simple syrup i made myself we've talked about this a bunch of times it's just an equal part by weight water and sugar mm -hmm. uh, and then we're going to add just a tiny bit of our vinegar this is going to give some strawberry flavor to the meringue slash souffle but it's also going to increase the acidity and make it a more uh, make make the foam stand up a bit more to all the stuff that we're about to fold into it. And last but not least, 
one of my favorite bits of chemistry. You'll see me use guar or xanthan gum a lot to increase the viscosity of stuff. It makes, it's a thickening agent for lack of a better term. You'll see people use guar gum syrup where that has already been mixed into the syrup as a way to give cocktails a better mouth feel. I'm gonna take this guy, a milk frother, which works really well for small foamy ingredients. And yes, I'm not shaking this because it works way better <laughs> to just make the meringue inside one part of my cocktail shaker. I think you did try to shake it and didn't that take like 10 minutes, which was so a lot of long. shaking. <laughs> this oh is a much, much better way. And this little device, I love it because it's it's not very loud and you can use it to froth up milk and your coffees. Uh, what else have you frothed up with it? It's like there's so many uses to it that you think like, I don't know, how would I ever use one of these frothers? And it's like, there's surprisingly a lot of a lot of them. Yeah, well, pretty much anything you want to froth. Yeah. <laughs> or mix in small well, amounts. Like, you have froth, haven't you done uh, yogurt and something else? No? Um, and cream. The, the I cheese. use it in, in protein shakes. Protein shakes, yes. Yeah. So you can froth on protein shakes with this if you don't have like one of those fancy protein frother uppers. I don't know. Frother uppers. <laughs> yeah. Now it's really good. Uh, it's really good for cappuccino or latte. Yeah. That's what it's designed for. Yeah. So you just put uh, milk in the microwave until it reaches, uh, I can't remember the exact temperature in Celsius. It's like, I think it's like 90 degrees Celsius. Yeah, it does need, I, I found that out with almond milk especially, it needs to be a certain temperature, otherwise it will not froth up. Yeah. Learn that the hard way. Yeah, but also it doesn't need to boil. So yeah. if milk or almond milk boils, they will uh, just completely, not only completely fall apart, so the fat will separate from the liquid. Mm -hmm. It'll also taste disgusting, especially with regular milk. It'll be what's called scalded. Yeah. We've talked about that before in movies. Maybe, possibly. But yeah, and this is taking a little more time than last time just because I made twice as much. But I want to make sure that we have that just luscious cloud of sweet goodness. And we're looking for what's called uh, soft peaks. Not quite, yeah, not quite stiff peaks. We're never going to get to it because I put so much syrup in there. Yeah. But if you, see what I'm, yeah, if you see what I'm doing here, it's I'm tilting it to the side so that I can get inject. Ah. Yeah, I can lift it up. Yeah, move the camera just a little bit. So see how I'm... Hold on. Hold it still. I can move it. You are moving it in okay. the exact opposite All way right. that I'm trying to move okay. it. I okay, got there it. we go. Okay. So I'm getting to the stuff down at the bottom, the liquid at the bottom, so that we continue to froth it. But that is just about enough. Anyway. Oh, I love, I love the look meanwhile, of things. Meanwhile. Meanwhile. Yeah. Dallas. And there we go. So that is that is what you would call a soft peak. Oh. You see how it's not, how it holds up, but it yeah. falls over a little bit? Yeah. That's about what we want. OK. Because we don't, we want people to actually be able to drink the cocktail. Yeah. But we also want it to be fluffy and have that cloud effect, which is so nice. Mm -hmm. So see it, it's still, it's just barely Oh, that's so cool. Yeah. It's still, but it's still viscous. Mm -hmm. And now in our other container, we are going to take some frozen strawberries. And again, this is a double portion. And this is going to give us, this is what's going to chill the cocktail. So we're going to take double strawberries, another good slug of syrup. Because we'll need some liquid for it. Depending on how much you want, this can go anywhere from a half to a full ounce per serving. I'm gonna do somewhere in the middle, so I'm gonna do around one and a half ounces. 
Volt is going to be drinking this, and she doesn't like hers very strong. Yeah, I don't. And just to add a little bit of character to it, we're going to add another drop of our lush, lush, lush vinegar <laughs> and a few sprigs of mint. And now we just mash that, muddle it together. You can, can direct yes. this view. Directing the view <laughs> as we mash it in. And one thing I did try, so the, the frozen strawberries are going to make it very thick. There's pectin in those strawberries that also help mm, thicken things. Pectin. Pectin. Oh, also, I almost yeah. forgot to make it look. you got to make pink. Super pink. Super pink. This is totally optional. <laughs> Not necessary, unless you're extra like me who yeah. wants everything pink. But this is totally natural, food grade, food coloring, syrup with no taste. So we're just going to... Get a little drop of that in here. Fun fact, did you know that red velvet cake is chocolate? Yeah, this is why we have it. I did not know that. Why, why does it not taste like chocolate? Obsessed. So many questions. With red velvet cake. Yeah. There it goes. All right. Okay, so we got a drop of that in there, and it's going to turn that into uh, just a luxurious red. Oh, yeah, that's what I'm talking about. Okay, so one thing that I tried to do when I was first experimenting with this was strain this like a cocktail, mm -hmm. but that doesn't work because it is too thick. So we are just going to, uh, we can't see that at all. We're just going to strain it in to the same strainer that we use as a double strainer go. You get to see our behind the scenes. <laughs> Ignore the lights in yeah. the background. Yeah, just uh, you can hold it up and point it down. Yeah. There you go. I'm going to add a camera holder to my <laughs> LinkedIn skills. <Yes. laughs> Yeah, so this is just the same uh, way that you would make, uh, what's the word that I'm looking for here? Uh, ah, shoot, Some I blocks. No, the, uh, the, uh, the coolie. sauce. Coolie, 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 yeah. This is like a quick coolie, if you will. In fact, you could totally pre-make this and then just add the alcohol to it. Yeah. But how would you live stream if that were the case? Yeah. Now you just clean off that spoon and we fold. And when folding, you never want to go crazy. You're just trying to lift. But at the same time, this isn't a full souffle because we kind of want it to fall a bit. We're just incorporating things. Mm -hmm. So see how it makes almost like a marshmallow cream? And now we pour. Right. Oh my god. Oh wow, look at that. That looks so good. That looks Boom. so good. This is like a boozy dessert for sure. Yes. Yeah, so uh, don't ask us on the calorie count. It's probably it, no. It's not that high. Oh, okay. Then it must be high in protein because it, it is high in protein. So yeah, there you go. It's, this is like really like a healthy kind of boozy drink. Yeah, I mean, this is a double portion of it, but a single <laughs> portion only has look at that know, seventy ish. It's like. 200 calories, give or take. Yeah. yeah we'll look at look at it flow with over. Oh my gosh. All right, now so now to decorate it, yeah. we're going to do this. We're going to take a nice little one of these. Volta got these guys because we tried to make. Oh, it's sinking. Oh. <laughs> we'll stack them on top of each other. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, now they're just a nice surprise. <laughs> Okay. All right, just decorate it with a strawberry. Oh, show people how to make a strawberry heart. I don't like the strawberry hearts, but I will it. try it. It's a, I like it. It doesn't, it looks silly. So you're supposed to <laughs> cut off, looks like a strawberry V. Yeah, like a little V at the top, and then boom, you got a little heart. It looks nothing like a heart. 
You can like round it and stuff. Oh yeah, there's a heart. Sure. <laughs> As this poor thing <laughs> falls over. <laughs> there you go. Sure, so that, that is the bad. Ichigo dream. <laughs> a cocktail that is literally all the foam on the top of a cocktail. Cheers, sweet fun. Oh, look at that. You you will need a spoon to finish this off. I don't think so. No, like you to scoop oh, it off yeah, yeah. at the end. Just like a, a good espresso. Mm -hmm. Is oh it my good? God. This, it's even better than the first one you made. <laughs> mm. Well, it's weird. It's like it's like breathing a strawberry. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Mm. Oh, that is good. Yeah. I'm bragging about myself here. No, but... this is like I'm. Yeah, that acidity so really adds to impressed. it as well. This is so delicious. Mm. I like. Oh my gosh. Mm. Yeah, and you can mess around with the ratio between the vinegar and syrup depending on your own taste. See. And you could probably add like a little lime as well if you wanted to move a little more. But yeah, there's there's definitely a way to play off this base. Like, <laughs> you can totally do it. As long as you do the egg whites, some sort of a drop of a flavored vinegar and guar gum, you can fold pretty much anything into it. Oh, I'm looking, <laughs> I'm trying to look at the comments and and talk at the same time. Thank you so much, Yolanda. I appreciate you joining. It does. So there you go, folks. <laughs> Cheers. Cheers. All right. So let Hopefully me. You can drink that while you. <laughs> while you partake. Yeah. And then I will. All right, very guys. Quietly clean up. So let me turn on my light. Boom, oh, lightness. Okay. Thank you so much to everyone that's tuned in. I can leave this, right? Yes, you can leave that, yeah. Uh, let me, um, will you watch for the comments? Yes, um, I will be your, Okay. I will be your moderator. Thank you. All right, so this is going to be um, a really fun, fairly simple one to paint. There's not a lot of elements to it. Here. All right. Um, so we're gonna get started with quick sketch. So I am a lefty, so I have to position my my um, supplies in just the right manner, so it's like comfortable for me to access them. All right. So we're gonna get started with. So this is like a, a coupe. Right, coupe? Yeah, coupe, 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 coupe glass. A coupe glass. Depending um, on how fancy how you want. How fancy you want to say it. Yeah, mm -hmm. coupe or coupe. Um, <laughs> and then, uh, so uh, we're going to start with kind of like um, a curved, so two curved lines at, at each side. So they're going to be kind of uh, parallel, not parallel, but like mirror images of each other. And then from these two lines, we're going to have another slightly, slightly curved line towards the center like this. And another one on the other side so that they meet sort of in the middle. Um, uh, another way you could also like to make it even simpler, you could just sketch this as one big curved line here at the bottom and then just extend the, um, the stem with two parallel lines towards the, towards the bottom of the page here. And then for the base, it's gonna be like a little, um, more like a narrow shape of an oval. So let's see, I'm just going to lightly sketch this oval just kind of eyeballing it. And then of course, uh, having erasers, I'm gonna erase some of these extra lines. Um, I am sketching, I, I say lightly, but really I'm, I'm sketching kind of um, opposite of lightly. <laughs> I'm pressing down on, on, my, on my pencil just so that you guys can see it really well um, in the stream. Otherwise, like a pencil mark would be very light on, um, in a video. 
But whenever you're sketching this, I would recommend to use, um, to do it very lightly with your pencil because otherwise, like unless you're a fan of that kind of like sketchy pencil look with watercolors, it'll be hard to get rid of those lines um, afterwards. Firmly. Firmly, thank you. <laughs> it's like the opposite of lightness. Um, all right, so we got our glass here. The top I'm gonna do another kind of slightly curved line here and then another one so this is also going to resemble like a very much narrow little oval shape and then uh for the strawberry if you think of the shape of the shape it's kind of resembles a triangle but it just has rounded points so we're gonna essentially pretend like we're doing a, a um triangle shape but then the edges or the points are rounded and the lines are a little bit curved here at the top and then for the strawberry leaves there's, these are just going to be like little little wavy lines like kind of just a series of curved lines that that are joined at the top here and then i am going to erase these extra lines because I want my strawberry to stand out so it's like sitting on the edge of the glass. Um, and let's see, I think I'm pretty much ready to start painting the so watercolors. Watercolors? Yeah. Oh, okay. There's, there are no, there are no comments okay. at the moment. All right, cool. All right, so I will proceed to the fun part, um, painting. So I am using um, a slightly uh, typically, you'll see me um, use one of these medium-sized water brush pens. I am going to use a smaller. This is like the, the smallest size, um, only because we have a fairly like small area to paint. So um, having a smaller brush gives me more control that way. So let's see, for the pink, since the color of this cocktail was very much light, so it, it was kind of like... Um, opaque pink color. I'm gonna mix a little bit. Um, so I'm using opera pink, which is a very intense color. I'm gonna add just a touch of orange to kind of get it into that more of a warmer pink because opera pink is typically more of a cooler color. So I'm warming it up. But then at the same time, I am adding a ton of water. So it's gonna be very light in value. And we want that because, again, um, the cocktail itself wasn't very, like, uh, wasn't a dark, vi like, vibrant pink. So now I'm just using some of this mix. It's going to look fairly light on the page, but that's okay. So I'm just kind of painting the contents of this cocktail. And I'm keeping kind of like a slight, slight curve here at the top. Then I'm going to clean off my brush and I'm going to lift off a little bit of the paint here. So essentially, um, this is like a little bit of a highlight on the gloss. So I have the light sources coming from this direction. So I want to give it a little bit of depth, even though this is like a fairly like simple and quick sketch. Doing this little trick really helps um, give a little bit of dimension to um, whatever it is that you're sketching. And the important thing to remember here is to clean off your brush after every single time because otherwise you would just be like reintroducing the paint back and we're trying to remove it. All right, um, let's see. Uh, I'm going to add just like a few little um, tiny brush strokes at the very top to kind of show a little bit of the texture of the actual like the top of the cocktail. And that also can, like, um, those few little lines can also help with the depth or, like, the showing a little bit more dimension to it. And let's see. Uh, next, we can focus on the strawberries. So I'm just going to mix in a little bit of red. So I have a couple of reds here. Um, this is a very kind of, like, reddish red, very warm. So I might add just a little bit of... Um, this red is called alizarin crimson, and it's a, a cooler red. Um, so it has like that kind of like darker look to it, but I like to mix the two just to um, 
Um, whenever sometimes was, like was that a, a lizard? A lizard, yeah. A, a lizard? A lizard. Lizard. I'm pretty sure I'm pronouncing it correctly. <laughs> I, I, I'm just trying to understand what the word is. Yeah. <laughs> Lizard person. That's I interrupted a, you. Oh no, you're fine. I was just saying that um, mixing sometimes different like reds or whatever color you're working with um, can just help with um, making that color more interesting because it's not just one like one shade of that red, but it's got a little bit of like warm, a little bit of cool red in there. So it just makes it more fun. I, I don't know. I just like to mix things so. So that's what I'm doing. And then, <laughs> of course, we have a little highlight on the left-hand side because the light source is coming from here. So you could either like um, leave it a little bit, you know, don't cover it with a lot of paint or just, you know, our traditional typical technique of lifting a little bit of the paint so it has that nice nice highlight on there then i'm going to grab a little bit of green and i'll paint that i'll paint the little um stem, not the stems the little leaves on the top and i'm going to clean up the brush and then let's see um going to paint the the glass and for for this color you could either use um a Payne's gray or a very light blue um actually whichever color you choose even like a little bit of a purple with blue can work um just make sure you add tons of water so that it's very light in value because otherwise it'll be too dark and it will kind of overpower the sketch and it will kind of take take the um attention away from you know the pretty pretty colors of the cocktail and kind of like focus more on the really dark lines so here i'm just adding like a little bit of the paint on again on the opposite side of my highlight the opposite side of my light source and now i'm just softening this line so that it looks a little bit more blended in kind of more natural it's so funny when it's that sort of like blink and it comes together. Yeah. As soon as you added that one little shadow, it just... Yeah, the shadows, I think, are so um, often overlooked because you, you wouldn't necessarily like think they make such a big difference, but they do because they really help whatever object you're painting just pop up the page. So I'm a huge fan of shadows and I think they're like really easy, a really easy way to add even if like say um, whatever you're painting like isn't like exactly representational of what it is, if you add a little shadow, boom, like it's gonna be better. <laughs> yeah. Well, and when you're doing it quickly, right, you can do those firm lines to make a bit of shadowing. Yeah. As you can see how the one on the left, well, clearly more like cartoony, I guess for lack of a better word. Yeah because uh, it was done quickly, still looks really cool. Yeah. Well, the one on the right was meticulously painted with I did, for, I did forget to add a cast shadow to this one, um, but I, I am adding it to, to the current one. And you know, you'll notice I added a little bit of paint and then now I'm just like softening the edge because essentially I want this to look more like a natural shadow and um, by adding a little bit of water, kind of soften those harsh, harsh lines. And you can always, you can always add a little, like I'm even adding more. So you, you'd say like, this is pretty dramatic of a con of like a shadow, but sometimes it like can look really cool. But if you're not a fan of this, you can always like lift it off with your brush. Say, say you accidentally added too much and you're like, oh no. Is too dark, and then you can just lift it off with your brush and clean it off. Oh, and yes, I agree with you, Yolanda. You did capture those shadows perfectly. Oh, thank you. <laughs> oh, and David also says shadows rock. Oh, thank you so much, sweet friends. <laughs> <laughs> uh, all right, so what well, another you know, 
Thanks. to remember if you're new around here, watercolors will dry a shade lighter than what you're seeing on the screen uh, or on your paper. Um, so if you're, you know, if your sketch has dried and you're like, oh, well, it's not as, not as vibrant as I saw it on like Volta's watercolors. Well, uh, usually, you know, you'll, you'll wait for it to dry completely and then you can go back in and add even more like another layer and kind of like pump up the colors even more, make it more vibrant. So like, for example, even on this strawberry here that I did earlier, if I just go back in and add more red, it like will add an even like more vibrant look to it. But of course I would recommend, you know, uh, unless you're going for that look um, to match the intensity uh, throughout the sketch. So, you know, I would probably add another layer on the other elements as well, just so that they both kind of like are vibrant together. Yeah, because now it just looks like that strawberry is floating in space. Yeah, it does, doesn't it? <laughs> <laughs> it's a gorgeous looking strawberry. I could see that as a look. Thank you. Well, oh my gosh, look at the cocktail. Look what it did. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's now made a bit of art itself. I don't know if you can you bring it to the uh, <laughs> it's hard. Oh, yeah. It's all, yeah. Well, actually, even on the bottom. Yeah. Oh, it's so pretty. Yeah. So it separated a little bit. So okay. now we have okay. a two part cocktail. Ooh, let me let me fix my sketch. Ooh. <laughs> it's That's like a, an ombre kind of. Well, not really. It's it's a very. It could be. Pronounced. Let's keep this Japanese theme going and use a. Toothpick, and I can make it. You mean a chopstick? Or chopstick, yes, that's what I meant. So let's see, can I stir that together to make an actual yeah. ombre? I don't know. It doesn't seem to be working. Yeah, that way. but we can in the painting just soften the lines. Hmm. Oh, that's that's even better. Experimenting in real time. Yeah. So I'm just dropping like some red. Ordinary some red and pink here and because you know it's much lighter at the top it creates that nice like transition and i'm reinforcing uh, my little highlight here. you know what happened uh those jelly beans melted oh the jelly beans yeah. <laughs> all right well i actually awesome. like i like this version better because uh, i'm a fan of ombre whenever i can make that happen it's and I know it's I know it's just pandering to Valentine's Day, but I am a sucker for jelly beans. <laughs> and these jelly bean hearts from Trader Joe's, oh my god. Very good. They're delicious. <laughs> well, sweet friends, thank you mm. so much for <laughs> Okay. Thank you so much for joining. I'll have some menu. Um, thank you so much for joining us today. Um I'm really excited about really having the rest of this. Let me see. Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> the rest of this delicious cocktail. Highly recommended. Maybe don't put any um, jelly beans in there because they will melt. But I um, thought it looked pretty. I was trying it. It does. It does look pretty. So. Cheers. We'll see you next week. Look at the little hearts that have words on them. That would yeah. be cool. Since it's a uh, Valentine's yeah. Day thing. Yeah, we'll see. We'll see what, what we'll do with the next mm. one. Thank you. <laughs> Bye. Bye.